Oh, wow. I can't believe you came back. All right. Came back for more. Now we'll finish chapter 4. Point, sorry. Chapter 4.5, Graphs on Tangents and Reciprocals, Parts 4, 5, and 6 today, okay? All right. Um, describing transformations and tangent graphs, not much different than sine and cosine graphs. So I'm sure you are familiar with them, but I thought maybe I'll go over a few with you. Number 21 and 27 from your book, describe the transformations required to obtain the graph of the given function from a basic trig graph. So your basic trig graph is going to be this, your big STD, okay? All right. So let's compare it to that. Number 21, I want you to think about it first, okay? And think about what happened and picture it. Ah, three amplitude, huh? So I wonder what's going to happen to the, you know, the tangent graph that you know, right? The tangent graph that you know, right? You know that it looks something like this, right? I wonder what will happen to it if the amplitude is not a 1, but a 3, like maybe up here somewhere, right? Okay, so think about that. So you're right, it did get skinnier, right? To get skinnier or taller, right? I don't know. However, like you describe it to yourself, right? So we would say in math, it would say a vertical stretch by factor of three. So again, vertical, we always just take the number as is. But look at number 27. It's a little bit different. So I want you to imagine what happened to the period from the original. This one, the period is pi, okay? What happened to the period? So did it take longer or did it take a shorter amount of time to complete one cycle, right? And you can see that there's something happening here and there's something happening here. So there's a vertical shift as well, okay? So there's three things happening. Let's see if you can describe it. And you know that this affects verticalness or, right, or X, I think. Okay, X, right? And then this guy affects horizontal. Hmm, I wonder how. Okay. okay, think about it first. Okay, So maybe you're calculating the period. You can if you want to. So period of this function is pi over b, and b, it looks like it's a pi over 2. So our period is going to be pi over pi over 2. So did you guys get 2? Now 2 is less than, right? 2 is less than pi. That means it got what? Hmm. That means in order for us to complete this cycle here, it takes shorter amount of time, right? It takes shorter amount of time. That means it's going to get just, it squeezes in, right? The vertical asymptotes kind of shrink in, right? Okay, so I hope you were thinking, so, well, maybe I'll like, just think about it for a little, a little while and see what you write. Okay, stop the video. Okay, I know you stopped the video. So did you say something like this horizontally? Because each cycle became shorter, right? Horizontally shrink by, but do you remember we talked about horizontal? It's always the reciprocal that we talk about, by 2 pi. Okay, think about how the, how the pi became, uh, how the pi became this, right? It became this by multiplying it by this value here. Okay, think about that. Ask me questions too. Okay, what else did it do? Right here, that tells us everything got reflected. Reflected by what? Reflect, reflected across the x-axis, right? Because every y-coordinate that you produced here, it got flipped, right? It became the opposite. So it went across the x-axis, right? All the y-coordinate that used to be like up here became down here because it became the opposite, okay? It used to be here, but now it became here. Therefore, across the x-axis. And the plus 2 vertical shift shifted up by 2. Easy peasy. Okay? All right. That's all you need. I'll practice a little bit more of these transformation descriptions, okay? And if you have any questions on how we use these words stretch and vertically stretch and horizontal stretch, let ask me, okay? All right. Extra example here. Please help me write the uh, equation for the given tangent function. So you can see that this is a tangent function. Okay, all right, okay. Look at the period, examine. Look at the vertical asymptotes. Look at the amplitude, okay? Amplitude looks like it's, oh, okay. And you could look at the scale too. You see this is one, this is two, this is negative one, negative two, okay? Ah, okay, so easy peasy. Amplitude is one. What's the period? I know it's pi over b. What's my b, which is pi over period, okay? Who can we get first? Hmm, I 
wonder, okay? Let's get, what do you think, you guys? This is kind of tricky, right? You got to look at the graph real carefully, okay? Mm, what do you think about the period? How long did it take to, for us to complete one cycle, right? So I went from here. So like, let's do here this coordinate to this coordinate. That's one one cycle, right? Or you can think about it. Oh, if this guy from zero is here is two pi, what does it say about this guy here? It must be pi. And it goes from pi to negative pi, right? So if one asymptote to the other. Ah, so the period must be two pi. So period is two pi, okay? Period is two pi, okay? So in our case, period is 2 pi. So what does that make our b? So our b is p, uh, pi over 2 pi, which means our b is half. Okay? It looks like there is no shifts up or down because our 1s and negative 1s are the same. Okay? But your normal tangent graph goes like that, right? Because tangent of pi over 2, right? Tangent of pi over 2, right? Uh, is going to be uh, a positive, but it became a negative. So everything flipped. So hopefully you understand that there was a reflection of the vertical, I mean, sorry, a reflection across the x-axis. So everything that we used to be, let's say here, I'm going to go back to the first cycle from here to here. Everything that used to be here became here. Everything that used to be here came up here because our normal tangent graph goes like that. Remember that? Okay, take a look at your notes from the previous lesson, okay? All right, let's move on to part five. Part five is solving for x with periodic functions. All right, remember, I want you to stop and ask questions and then continue to take notes, okay? Solve for x in the given interval. You should be able to find these numbers without a calculator using reference triangles, okay? And proper quadrants. Okay, we, we're all used to this. And always focus on the domain that they'd ask for. So it looks like to me, and what about you? It looks like it just is only worried about the first quadrant, okay? Do you ever think in sex equal two? Secant x equals two, you think that way? I know you're not a weirdo and I know you're normal. So I know that you think this. Isn't this really cosine of x equal to what? You know they're reciprocals, so it's gonna be a half. Okay, now that makes it so much easier, right? You're like cosine equals half. Where does cosine equal half? Well, draw the triangle, right? Right and a hypotenuse, half, okay? So it's gonna be x equals pi over three. Only, and you understand why it's only because it's only in the first quadrant. But you're right, there are two answers that make this true, okay, right? There's another one here, right, that makes this true. But we're only worried about this one because of the restricted domain, all right? Let's go to number 33, which is a similar kind of question. Whoa, this one's asking for a crazy, okay? It's asking for two pi to two and a half pi, okay? Whoa, okay? That's a weird one, all right? So let's try. Again, x equals one. How can you rewrite that so it's friendly to you? You're right. It's sine x equals one, reciprocal of one, right? Okay, well, where is sine x equal one? Think about it. Okay, hopefully you came up with x equals pi over 2. But look, does that fit into our domain? No, so we need to keep adding more. How much more? We got to add 2 pi. We have to go around because we're here, right? We're here, but we got to go around. And when we go around, we have to add 2 pi. So x must be 5 pi over 2 only. Okay, so that's the correct answer here. Okay, ask me questions if you have, if you're struggling, okay? All right, let's move on to the applications, but we're going to do that in the next screencast. Dun, da, da, da.